Yep. She got me. She's not going too well. Mm. Okay, guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I listened to what everyone said on the last video. And as you can see, in the end, I went for the Bilstein setup. Now, I did take everyone's advice and I did listen to uh, the majority of you. So whoever commented on the last video when I was asking for help, thank you very much. So in the end, I went for the B14 Comforts, the Bilstains. Reason for this was I looked at the uh, Solo, I looked at other kits. Purely went for this because I had bill stains before. It wasn't the comforts. A friend of mine's just bought another bill stain set similar to this, and he said he wished he'd have paid the extra and had the bill stain comforts. So that's what I went for. So if I get you now and show you quickly. So this is the kit. It does not come with top mounts and drop links, but I bought those because obviously mine are gonna be worn, so I'd rather replace all this new if I can. So today's job is gonna be, hopefully, it's gonna, I say hopefully, I'm not gonna jinx it. Hopefully we're gonna install all this today. I'll film it for you guys. It's not gonna to be too much of a how-to, but I'm gonna be showing you everything that I'm doing step by step. So let's pull the van up and uh, start taking it apart. Spring, the core springs broke on the offside front, so turning is risky. Ah, that's not nice noise, that. Oh, that's not nice. That is not nice, that noise. been a long time coming if you guys have followed this conversion you know it's probably the longest conversion on YouTube so thanks for sticking around thanks for supporting me I'm back now uh, I'm gonna get this done and I've got some other awesome projects that start from tomorrow probably will film or be uploaded within a couple of weeks so stick around so this fan is a 19 mil socket You are always better to leave the weight on the vehicle, crack the wheel nuts, just crack them off first, then jack it up, then they'll just spin off. So this is the damage. As you can see there, the bottom coil spring snapped the bottom coil there and then it just allowed it to all drop down this was rubbing on the tyre I mean it needed some TLC they're an old system but what we've got to do now is we've got to unclip this we're going to spray some luby doob across it all we've got these two bolts here at the back this is a T28 so the T28s they have the bolts at the back and the strut slides into the hub and the hub wraps around it and tightens onto the bottom of the strut. If it's a T32, I believe you've got two bolts like that, but they're at the front. So the strut comes down and it's got um, a front part on it and the, uh, a female part and the hub's got a male part and the hub goes into the strut and bolts in that way. So you'd have two at the front here, but because it's a 28, you've got the two at the back. So we're going to spray all this now so it's soaking and also the top bolt looks like we're going to have to remove the scuttle here because I think the bolts are down in here. So I don't know if we can take this access panel off or whether we can just, or whether we've got to take the whole strut, strut, uh, scuttle off. Super excited, I haven't had the van on the road for a long time, you can see from the moss look. Wire brush is always a must. 
just going to wire brush these threads here where they're a bit crusty there just to help the nut wind off and the same there I have got new of these so I could just cut them off but uh, for now we're going to try and I'll probably undo the bottom one actually and just leave it attached to the strut so for this bit I've literally just taken off the lid just because I want to see if removing this at all which is a bolt there by the look of it gives me access into there Okay, yes, so there is a Torx 30 here, a Torx 30 here, which, if you don't know, is the star type. type. That. And then that's pulled that out. So that is obviously an access panel for the strut top. So now we can remove that cover, and there we go. Yep, she got me. Son of a. Did I get that? <laughs> I think I did. I think I did. The joys, the joys of working on cars or vans, trucks, whatever. So the drop link for me was a 15 mil on the boot side and then a I think it was a, and it was a 19 mil at the back. So this side here is an 18, and this side here is an 18 also. There and there. <laughs> Pro tip, head torch, massively useful. Looks a little bit strange, but massively useful in situations like this look. See how much extra I can see. Okay, so quick update on the strut top part. So, can you see it? This bit here is a 21 mil nut, but if you just turn it on its own, it'll just spin. So at the top is a T45. So it's like that. Will it focus? T45 and that just slots into the top of the thread and then you can literally turn it round until it hits the body until it hits the body here and then that should just allow you to literally crack that off because they're not that tight those then we're going to move on back down to here I've already undone these by hand so these will all gone off now I've done the, the link the drop link so this should be dropping off now so I'm not taking it too serious guys, I'm trying to have a bit of fun and um, trying to show you kind of what's going on. There we go. Okay, so the weight of that is going to fall forward. Have I got anything that will work? That will work for now. Can you see that? I've literally just, that whole unit is trying to fall forward, so I've just propped that up for now. We've got the ball joint to get off, which seems to be quite stubborn. Now my hammer's under there, <laughs> so I can't use that. Uh, the ball joint's been a right pain. I think I'll wait. I think I'll undo the rest of this first. Massive, massive must, something like this. Take your time, guys. Spray the threads, let it settle. Wire brush it off, spray it again. Keep doing it through the job, because if it, if it rounds or snaps off, you're going to be in a world of pain. Okay. So this is just real, real guys. I'm just, just showing you how it goes. Um, just kind of working it out as I go myself. I should have made sure that undone at the top first and then carried on down here so when I undone the male part of the strut that goes into the hub I could then knock the hub down and the strut would stay where it is because at the minute I've got no weight to pull it away to separate them so I need a second jack but I'm being lazy I've put an axle stand under the front um, 
yeah, I need to just compromise. my fingers do not do what I do this is not how it should be done not even close so you wasn't recording okay fantastic so we've jacked that up and let it back down now we need to try and spread these we can put a chisel in the back if we need to um steering locks on fantastic a bit more looby doob she's she's tight she's spread she's definitely spread out now she's definitely got got her legs open <laughs> trying to bind inside Son of a... This is not going too well. How can I do this? Why is it not coming off? It's literally at full travel. Uh, the back's been opened up. The back's definitely open. I think it's just perseverance to be honest cleaning up under here first before you knock it up is uh, it's probably advised this was no easy task I'll show you what I had to do in the end kept lubing it kept working it I knocked a chisel where is it I knocked a chisel up into the back there let's get the light on into the back there to open that up and then I've tucked the wire away. You can remove that if you want. It's quite easy to pull it out of the way. And I've literally, copper hammer, I've just literally had to be whacking that. And as you can see, it's coming, coming up. I'll take that off there, because that may drop. And then, yeah, let's turn this off. Yeah. Wrong one. I'm gonna get a hold of this because it may fall now. Guys, it's not an easy task, to be honest. But there we go. That's that. That's that. So what we'll do now is we're gonna wire brush down inside here with this on a drill just run it all up and down put some grease on the new one swap it all over and then I'll get that done I'll show you so one just to like I said I'm just keeping it real one just to just persevere with it it is difficult it's a lot harder on the floor than a ramp Yours may not be as bad as this because this is quite rusty in there. It has been off the road for like, I don't know, a year. Um, I don't look after that part of the van that good more or, or, or as maybe I should. So this is probably almost worst case scenario. You can see the reason why the springs broke is just because everything's rusty. These suspension have been on for like 10 years, nine years, a long time. So persevere with it, a little bit of patience. Uh, don't rush it even if you can only get one done you know a day get one done on a Saturday one on a Sunday it's worth it guys it's worth it so we we'll get that done now and then I'll show you cleaned up in here put some luby doob in we have cleaned up the surfaces that the bolts sit on we're going to clean up these next I won't show that we're just going to run them with this and put some lube on the drive shaft has popped out there, so I don't know if you can see it. Be mindful of that, it just pushes back in, but I won't put it back in yet. Is what we're taking off. <laughs> this is kind of what I went for this. This system has been on this van for like, I've had it seven years, it was already on there, a couple of years, seven, eight, nine, you, you know, you know, we're talking 10 years and it's been abused. You know, look, look how much work it's done. 
it hasn't blown in like two years so it was kind of proven for me that's why i went for these hopefully these are still being as good built as good quality as what these was you know 10 years on or something things change don't they? let's be let's be honest so all you got to do now is you've just got to basically mirror image this minus the snap spring so for that it's going to be strut first removing your top nut now adjustment these i'm guessing that the lower this is the lower that will be so we're going to set it uh probably 20 mil up i'll show you that when it's on but to be honest i don't really know these are the comforts so they don't they're not the lowest kit or they're not like solos or anything so this isn't going to be slammed but i don't run a slammed fan um i'm going for more usable height so you basically set up that way you want Call spring goes on the top now if you're worried about this most of this doesn't go on the wrong way if you keep that built then you've always got a reference but generally most of it can't go on wrong so as long as you take your time you can't really go wrong okay then just 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 knock everything over so it's been a task it's been a nightmare let me tell you why um i'm literally it's two o'clock and I started this at about 10 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I've only done one side, I've got three more to do. I've come across a few problems, which don't let it put you off doing it because you can potentially learn from my mistakes and you can not do this, but you must be better off taking the bottom, the steering arm, steering ball joint off or something because I couldn't get this low enough to get it in so you couldn't put it into the hub first and then get it under the arch it had to go up and hold and bolt up onto there just get interrupted by the horses when he was there she'd love that so i couldn't do it that way so i had to go up into the arch first but then i couldn't physically get the hub low enough the ball joint the ball joint came out, which, <laughs> not the ball joint, sorry, the uh, man I need to eat. The drive shaft came out, which just, it wasn't too bad. This is the, the, the full length one, so it's two half, so it's a bit more tricky. The other side shouldn't be as bad. That dropped out, and then... So I lost all my words then. So that dropped out, I got that back in, but I couldn't physically get the hub low enough. So what I had to do in the end was I had to drill a hole in a bit of timber like that. I don't, I don't advise this, do not do this. Uh, one, I've done the other side, I'll have found out what I did wrong. So you will know by the end of this video, so stick to the end. Hit that like button and uh, give us a follow. So I had to bolt that into there and then jack that up, which was just, it was just so awkward. Um, I've been battling it, I've got multiple cuts. I've been battling it for about two and a half hours, this one side. I mean, I bent all the little bracketry and stuff, so I don't advise doing that. Um, I've got it all on, I've got the new drop link on, got it all done. I've adjusted this, so you have to keep this thread from moving. You get a smaller spanner in the kit that you can hold in those lugs. These are really sharp, so be careful, because I've cut myself now. This just rips your skin open. Uh, and then you use these to adjust the top one to where you want it. And then the bottom one is a kind of locking retaining washer. So what I'm doing, uh, retaining nuts, so what I'm doing is I've just set it with this. I'm gonna kind of do it like that. So from the start of the threads, I've got to go up a little bit, but I'm gonna do it 20 mil on this side. Um, Yes, this is not a mega low kit. You're gonna find me. Yes, this is not a mega low kit. So I don't know how low or high 20 mil on the threads are gonna be, but we're just gonna try it. Just gonna get it back on the ground. Uh, so I'll film that bit. I'm gonna carry on now. I have tightened this top nut in here, that. But what I will do is I'll leave all that access panel open. And then when I put the vehicle back on the ground I'll, and all the weights on the suspension I'll just nip it one more time so I'll get all that done and then when I'm dropping it down we'll go to that 
Okay, so it is now a, another day. It is a cold day, in fact, quite a cold day today. But the other day when I was filming, let's go, I'll go past. Okay, so it is a new day. It is a very cold day today, to be fair. So we need to get hammering on that thing to get warm. I messed up the other day. I took it for granted that the kit would come with basically everything I need. I didn't realise till I already had the van stripped and then I couldn't do anything about it, that I didn't have the dust covers. I couldn't use the old ones because they're completely knackered. So I had to order some. So I've now got the new dust covers in, which come with bump stops as well inside. So we'll get these fitted. What we'll do is we're going to jump onto the back now, get the back all buttoned up, the back finished, and then we'll go back on the front. And then I'll touch on a couple of things that I forgot to mention the other day and we'll strip off what we did and then get it completely finished. Okay, so same again, chock up the front wheels, Consider it to be on a, a flat level uh, if you're going to jack it up. Jack the vehicle up, take the wheel off, and then I'll bring you over. There's a 21mm nut there, which comes all the way through, and there's another 21mm head down here. Point to note on this straight away, it looks like they've put the adjuster, can you see that, on the bottom, when actually the adjuster should be on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that 21mm nut at the bottom, which I'm hoping will release the damper and it means I can move the arm down, get the spring out and then have a bit more clearance here to access the top bolt and then the damper's off and the spring's out. So if you look here, this spring adjuster should be on the top and that's why you probably can't quite see that's why the suspension right in the bill stain is upside down because these springs are only going one way and whoever fitted this before the adjuster should be on the top i don't i'd say they've done that for ease because it's easier to adjust it at the bottom um, i'm not too sure it doesn't fit that well on the bottom part it's quite difficult <laughs> it's quite difficult under here to film um but there's a brake pipe here, so be mindful of that, this brake pipe here. You can get underneath it to get a little bit of leverage, but if you're going to do that, just be careful and mindful that it is a brake pipe. So do a full inspection of it after to make sure that you're not going to lose your brakes uh, when you're going down the road. But this top bolt here on the strut is quite difficult to get to, but you can get to it. I'm going to take the spring off now. There is a part of the chassis that you should cut down. This has already been done because someone's already put a lowering kit on this years ago. So I'll show you that and then we'll just literally crack on and get it done. So there's the spring off. We'll go over to the bench for that in a sec. So that there is the part that I was referring to. If yours has not been messed with before, that will probably be a couple of inches longer. And what you need to do is you need to put your adjuster up like that and where the adjuster sticks out at the bottom, mark it with a pen and then cut that, that bottom part off, probably about 10 mil or something. Um, obviously I can't do that to show you because it's already been done poorly, I might add. That's the top one, that's a 19 mil head. Okay, so I thought I'd quickly show you this. This was fitted with the adjuster on the bottom, like that. Now that's incorrect, and that's why the writing on the spring was upside down, because these will only fit one way, but it should be fitted like that. Logically, I think they've done it because that's easier to adjust when it's at the bottom. So they've probably looked at it and thought, well, it's gotta go that way, but the spring was a little bit loose, so that's not advised and what it's actually done because the spring's been bouncing around in the top cup because it's not as tight as if it was the correct way it's actually like put a divot in the cup so the cup's kind of tapered now so make sure the adjuster your new one 
you've got your rubber spacer that goes in between the adjuster body and the chassis of the of the van and it goes like that drop that there's a plastic cap that goes on as well the spring sits on the plastic cap so it's not metal to metal another way you can do it as well as knowing how to locate it if you forget is you have to buy these again you have to buy stuff it doesn't come with it you have to buy these bottom rubber mounts well these won't fit through the top turret like that way the way that they would have been if they was fitted with this incorrectly they have to go on the bottom and just note that there is a locator on the arm there's a, lo a little divot you've got to locate that into the arm up there and then the same at the top the spring if you can see that the spring will locate see if i can get a bit of light on it for you the spring will locate there into that bit so the spring locates and the bush locates so the bush locates into the arm and the spring locates into the bush I know it's a rubbish camera angle, I know I'm going on, but it's just information that you guys need. Okay, so the way that I ended up doing it was a block of wood on top of the disc to space it up so it doesn't hit the back plate, and then a bar under this curved part of the chassis. And you can do it yourself and hang weights off the end of here, or if you've got a secondary person, just to push down like that. You can literally just drop the springs in. So if you have got someone, your missus or anyone you can get just to do it with it, just it's just it's a massive, massive advantage. Just having that little bit of extra leverage um, saves you all the, the hassle and the struggling. I definitely recommend get somebody, your neighbour or somebody just to just to do that little bit for 30 seconds. It's a big difference. Okay, so let's see where these Bilstein Comforts sit on the back. This is adjusted right up, so this is the lowest this kit will offer, unless you start getting, like, taking caps off and start machining stuff, um, which obviously this kit isn't for that. Okay, so to put it into a bit of pers pers perspective, is that the right word? In so basically, hmm, perspective, context, content, context. Man, I wish I was clever. Um, okay, so the back is completely finished now. Just as a reference, the near side is what I did first. And that took me about two hours by the time I got the right tools out, obviously with the filming. But by the time I'd messed about, learned a bit of, like, got the process dialed down um, and kind of learned quite a bit. That took about two, two, two twenty, I reckon, that side. Um, it started to rain on me and stuff, yes, granted. But then this side that I've just finished off now, the off side, that's literally taken me 20 minutes. And that's where the exhaust is, so I thought that was going to be a more difficult side. But interesting thing that I found... Obviously, looking at these, you can see they're as worn out as the front. This one is the one that I've just taken off. It didn't knock or anything, but look at this, guys. The spring is actually broke, and there's like a rubber kind of um, wrap round kind of sleeve that they wrap on the springs to stop it kind of hitting each other. Look at that. That is actually broken. Sorry about the information overload. I like to get as much information or facts to you so you can do it yourself. This side's done, this side's done. We're gonna move back onto the front now. It's like Gale Force Windsor at the minute. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to back on the front, but we're on the near side. So for that, you've got a Torx 30 bolt here, which is the same as the other side, one of these. Once you undo that one, it will allow you to flex this down to get to this one here. Once you've undone both of those, you can pull this out and that will let you get in to get access to the top bolt. Okay, so we've now got the van stripped, all the hubs hanging down. We're back on to building this. So a couple of things, obviously, I didn't do last time. This time I bought the dust covers. Now, why they don't come in the kit? 2024 for you I guess um, you get a bump stop and a dust cover 
point to note for this, the dust cover slides over this plastic collar on the suspension really nice and tight. This side doesn't, so it's the tight side you want because that just pushes and seals kind of tight over that. And you'll notice here, so now well you can see it, there's a groove. Well, that groove will sit inside the top of this. It lips, it pushes in inside and that's what retains that. So that's how you'll know which side is which. And then obviously that bit goes onto the top of there. So building this up, I'm gonna put a glove on because I've got blood going everywhere again. <laughs> you got your dust, uh, your bump stop, sorry, as well. So I'm not gonna go crazy on the grease. I'm just gonna put just bits on it. The bump stop, I'm putting the flat surface up. So putting a bit on the shaft here, you'll see it slots down and then I'm just pulling it so it's just below the surface. Now, uh, we'll, just, we'll just do it. I've, so now do your adjustment or leave it completely wound down and wind it up on the van. That's probably a better option. You've got your spring goes on next. Now, one point to note on this, the writing, for it to be installed correctly, the writing on the springs needs to be facing out when it's fitted to the van. One other thing I missed is this bolt here that comes with a nylock, uh, nylock nut, sorry, not bolt, which comes on the threads like that with the new suspension. Take that off and bin that. Stupid idea is to protect the threads, but I'll, I'll bet a lot of people have mistaken that for the hardware that you put back on, including me, to be honest. So you can see the difference. The original one's quite a long nut, see it? So remove that. And that nut that you've removed goes back on the top of this. This is just for transportation. Throw that away so you don't mistake it. And then you've got your dust cover. So I'm just putting bits of grease around the, the mating surfaces. Don't go over the top with the grease because what happens is it starts to pick up all the dust and all the dirt and then it actually goes against you. So I'm gonna slot this over the top. I'm hoping you can see this well, guys. So then that now will slide over that bottom bit really nice and tight. Just push it until it comes to the bottom. So that now is all the way down and then that's exactly where it needs to be. You can push the bump stop past where you need it, just like that. And then side on top of where metal meets metal. And then that goes on the top of there. There we go. How much nicer is that <laughs> when I've got the dust cover on? That's built now. We'll put the top bolt on, nip that down. Same detail again. You've got your Torx that holds the center shaft and then you can tighten it with a spanner. And then once that's done, bit of grease around the top mount and then we're going back up onto the van. Okay, so one thing I need to say um, in case it gets mistaken or mis misdone. If you're removing this top nut, Obviously lock it up. You can lock it off against the bench and hit it there with a hammer if you haven't got like battery tools or anything. But be mindful if you have got normal suspension and it isn't broke or it isn't lowered. Basically, if you can't move the spring like that, then the spring is still under tension. So do not remove that nut with it still under tension. You need to get spring clamps, go to your local garage, chuck them a tenner, compress the spring so it's safe to remove the top hat before you do it, because otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna be a missile and somebody's gonna get hurt. So make sure you've compressed the spring before you remove that nut. See how this one goes. I need a way of holding that. That's it. I'll just get this 21 mil on the top of the strut all the way to nipped. So this is the bit now that I don't advise. I actually went and watched some videos last time after I tried the other side thinking, what, why is it so hard? Everyone seems to take the hubs off, the bottom ball joint, the steering arm, um, or the tracker end. <sighs> I'm not doing that. So don't do what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do my block of wood trick again and jack it up 
and uh, drop it in the same way as I did last time. So uh, I don't advise doing it, but this is just me cutting corners um, and I'm, I'm happy to do that. If you're competent and you feel comfortable, comfortable, I'd rather do this than spin all those rusty bolts off and stuff um, and potentially cause more problems. So if you was on a ramp, you could probably get more leverage, bring the arm down a bit more, but I can't do that on the floor. I haven't got anyone else to help, so I'm just gonna do it this way. So here is my crazy contraption. It's just gotta go up that inch and then it just drops in. So let's give it a go. And then just jack it up a little bit. Literally, that's all it is. That's all it is, guys. That little bit. And then now she's in. Well, she's pretty much in. Put a bit of spray on it. Like that. And then we can work that like that a little bit. Let the jack down. See? I mean, it seems rough at first, but if you line it all up, spend the time, tighten that bolt on that, and take your time, it can literally be two pumps and pushed it in and back off. It's not like you're jacking it to the end of the world. Yep, so I just spray a bit of luba -doob around it, let that go in, J jack underneath, underneath the lower arm, because obviously now all this needs to come up. A little bit of pressure, and then I get two adjustables just on the actual uh, drop link mounts, and I just twist it like that. And as you're jacking up, it's slotting in. If it stops going in, just move it around a little bit and it'll just keep sinking down. Okay, so just as I put it back together, this is what I mentioned to you before, I thought I'd show you. So when you get to this point now, check everything over, do a visual inspection. You want the writing on the springs to be like that, facing out. That's apparently the correct way of fitting them. And just visually go around everything, make sure you've not knocked any brake pipes or anything like that. And then another point to note, see the two nuts? You want the two nuts on both sides facing forward to the front of the van. So basically away from the brake pipe, just to stop any rubbing and that. Okay, so I've just took it round the block quickly. Settled a little bit, but obviously it will settle more the more I drive it. So this is the comforts, kind of lowest setting. Obviously without doing lower top mounts or removing the rock, the locking rings, things like that. Quite happy with it. I probably would have locked it a little bit lower. It's probably about 10 mil higher than my last setup. But again, that was 10 years old. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm definitely happy with the front. I think the back will be better when I've got all the cupboards and that in there and it just squats it down that little bit more. But yeah, overall, if you're looking for the comforts, that's kind of the height you're gonna go, lowest and above. Okay guys, so there we have it. We're no longer running these, and we're no longer running <laughs> these. <laughs> Test drive, fantastic. Now, I'm gonna be biased a little bit. I've been driving a truck and stuff for months, so, and I haven't driven that. It's been off the road for like probably six months, so it probably would have drove nice anyway. And let's be honest, if you fit brand new suspension, it's always gonna be better than what you've already got it fitted, especially something that's 10 years old. Honest review, drives fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna let it settle. I think it'll just dial itself in slightly. Don't know what that's about, but I think it'll dial itself in. Um, so I'm really happy with it to be honest, I'm pretty glad I went for that. I'd like it a bit lower but once more weight's in it and it's settled down a bit, I think it'll kind of be where I wanted it to be anyway. I could do some slight hub mods and stuff, I'm not really keen on them to be honest but I could do it to drop it down slightly if I wanted to. If you're new to the channel, I'm back filming this conversion. I am just about to start a Chevette restoration, uh, so bear with it, there will be Chevette restoration videos and then kind of camper videos and they'll be kind of like in sequence really but there'll be like one each week and stuff like that maybe two uploads a week when I'm getting going so again 
If you want to support the channel, if you want to support me, subscribe guys and give us a like and a comment below if you know if you can it's free and it does help me out a lot and it helps the channel grow thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next one